Thomas here with Much Props, gonna give you another how-to video. Today, I am building something from the video game Dead by Daylight. I have made a mask from it previously. The Susie mask, I believe, is what it's called. I've never actually played the game, but I do get requests for it a lot. Uh, especially as we get closer to Halloween, the amount of masks that get requested are obviously uh, because people wanna cosplay as them or dress up as them for Halloween. So. I thought, why not build something in that genre again? I'm not gonna start from scratch though. On the channel, I've made roughly 450 builds or so at this point. Over a hundred of those are masks slash helmet builds. And I think I've got shapes that I can use. A key factor in making something relatively accurate is to get the shape right. And don't focus on all the little details and how it's gonna look at the end, but what is that base shape that I need to start out with? And I think I've got a mask already that kind of fits in that realm. There are a couple of Legion masks in Dead by Daylight. I've made the Susie mask, I believe. Um, there's also a Frank and uh, a Julie, I think. It, I, I'm not very familiar with the game, but uh, I, I have done a little bit of research as far as looking at images. So I'm going to make the Frank mask today using my Toby mask from Naruto. Yeah, I think it's gonna work. So uh, let's get to building. No, this is not an exaggeration. I have over 200 templates now spreading across over 450 builds linked in the description at the bottom of the videos below. And at least two or three times a week I have to explain where templates are to people. <laughs> it gets a little old. I shifted through the ginormous stack of my original patterns that I taped to 8.5 by 11 inch copy paper for the Toby mask. It is a pretty nice base shape that could actually make several masks from the dead by daylight series simply by changing the details on the front. <laughs> I trace my pattern onto some 6mm EVA foam to create the mask. Another question I get asked a lot is can I use another thickness or material? My answer is usually maybe. I like using 6mm foam because it's flexible enough to do complex curves and thick enough to hold its own shape. You are more than welcome to try using other materials and thicknesses, but the truth is what you see in the video is generally my first go with the pattern, unlike this build. The less curves in a pattern, the easier it is to use more rigid material. All the cuts are straight 90 degree angles. The large V shape cuts in the middle of each piece are where the pattern forces the shape into a curve. The smaller marks on the edges are registration marks. These help you to line up the parts with each other. Without them, you might pull the foam a little too much in certain spots and the joining of those pieces may end up crooked. To prevent your seams from pulling apart on these curved areas, use a heat gun to warm the foam up and make it pliable. Push the heated foam over a round structure. I generally use a glass globe cover for my back porch light. Hold it onto the surface until the foam starts to cool and it will maintain the curve. This step helps your foam get closer to its final shape and reduce the amount of pull on the seam lines during glue up. A question often asked about heat guns is can I I use a hairdryer? I would say no. Hair dryers typically don't get hot enough to make the foam pliable quick enough. If you plan on doing any foam fabrication, they are well worth the investment. Harbor Freight, Walmart, and Amazon typically have them for under $20.
My glue up of choice is barge contact cement. It's definitely more expensive than other glues, but in my experience works much better. It's formulated for leather, so it makes easy work of sticking foam together. I hit all the edges, let it set up till it's no longer wet, and then tack the parts together. Can you use other glues? Sure. All glues have pros and cons when dealing with different materials. Hot glue works with foam well, but it takes a while to set up on its own, so progress can be slow and it can be a little temperature sensitive. Super glue works quick, it's heat resistant to an extent, and it costs a little bit more per ounce, can make some foam brittle, and gives you less work time to position stuff. In my experience, contact cement is kind of that healthy middle point. Adhesion is great, a little can go a long way, and once set it sticks immediately or glue it wet and you can position it with a little bit more time. To get to this point, it took me about 15 minutes, so with just a little cleanup and detailing, this thing will get knocked out pretty quick. I would say probably in under an hour, maybe a little over, somewhere in there. I rushed through due to time constraints and would encourage you to take your time during assembly so that you don't spend more time in a later step doing cleanup and corrections. My seam lines are a bit messy from me rushing assembly, so I need to clean these edges up. I put on a respirator to protect my lungs from the dust and open a nearby window vent. I also have an air purifier in my build room that helps to get rid of those nasty foam particles. Starting with a sanding disc, I hit all the high points to level parts out. Then a second pass with a stone bit to smooth out all the marks. Remember this is foam, so you can easily bend it to get a better angle with your rotary tool. I'm going to let you in on a recording secret that I have developed over making videos on YouTube for more than five years. Um, my intro and outro are recorded after the build is done. I say that to point out that I'm not even sure yet at this point what I'm building. Look real close, I did a Google search for video game masks and after thumbing through the results I noticed a mask that fit my base shape. Further research and I learned what it was called, then I connected the dots to, oh hey, a couple of people asked for me to build that one. I draw these details onto my base and burn in the deep lines with a wood burner, making sure my respirator is back on to prevent smelling melty foam fumes. Gross. <laughs> Thank you. 
For the less deep battle damage scratches, I switch over to a stone bit on my rotary tool. My draw lines are generally reference points for what I am assuming is an image of the in-game mask. It may not be. I hit the areas with the corners of the bit to leave scratch marks. If you have seam line gaps on your build, hit them with the rotary tool a little bit to make it look like you did intentional battle damage there. Once done, I switch over to a sanding drum and drill out my eye holes. Two quick coats of Plasti Dip. I hit the mask with white and brown spray paint, wiping off random bits to get a messy surface. I did a good chunk of the paint job by purposely doing that sloppy spray paint. I did hit the surface with a clear coat once that was done to prevent the base layer from soaking up too much of the next step. This will make the rest of the paint job simple. I just need to push brown and black acrylic paint down into all the details to make them stand out. I wipe off most with a wet paper towel and then use a dry paper towel to dry it off. Once all my details are highlighted, I use a mix of red and a little bit of brown and random black here in there to make the bloody details on top. Time for strapping and covering the eye holes. I wasn't sure if the killer's eyes are covered in the game or if that's just the black background on the image. Regardless, I hold the mask up to my face to see where it rests on my head. Then I pull the elastic past that point to size the length. Cut it and sandwich it between the mask and some small strips of EVA foam with super glue to secure it. <laughs> The eye covers are just made from a scrap of an old sheer sweater my wife was throwing out that I hoarded and put into a tote somewhere. I super glue it to the inside around the opening. A lot of people ask me how I keep super glue off of my fingers. I don't, which is probably why my fingerprints are almost non-existent. Nail polish remover does a good job to help remove it and so does a pumice stone with some soap. You could also do like I'm doing here and use the back end of some scissors or something else to help press in that stuff without getting it all over your hands. are finished. Here is the end result. This was a super quick build, literally just pulling that template out from start to finish, not including paint to dry time. It took me an hour and a half. Um, so I don't think that's too terrible of a thing to put together relatively quickly. And with Halloween coming up, if you're in a pinch or if you're going to a con and you need something super fast, Finding a simple template like this could be a, a lifesaver in terms of you knocking out something. Uh, but yeah, maybe you will try and make one of these yourselves and impress your friends with your ability to pull from an old template and make something completely different than what it was originally intended for. 
Yeah. Maybe you'll get some. And inevitably, they're going to ask you, how'd you make that? You can give them one of these. Tell them much props. Well, I mean, you got to try it on, so. If you enjoy what I do here on YouTube and want to continue to see builds like this one, please consider joining these awesome people listed here with me over on my Patreon to build a bigger, better, more creative community together.